During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. Our friend Jim visiting the island today, who has given us this beautiful piece of slate, and he's going to fit it to the windowsill in the living room. And he's also going to show us how we want to finish the walls, so you'll get to see all that coming up. I'd love to run the grind grinder along that, but the house would be full of dust. Goodbye. So Jim's going to cut the slate. We were originally just thinking it would come from here, but we've got enough slate that he can fit it um, really snugly and make it come out like this. Um, we were going to do a dry run, dry fit it, and shore it up underneath with some stones from outside. It's going to look amazing. flat bits of stone mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. Go and grab me a couple, will you? Like right. Just feed them to me, Donald. That's it. Whoa, <coughs> you know what you do. That way you can see you did it as well. Tip for you. Never pick a stone up that you're not going to put in. Okay. Right? 
So you're looking at the depth of it. You know it's about that depth. And you can see before you pick it up, that's not enough. Right. Right? So you've either, you've either got a thinner one to go with, or you want a thicker one. Okay. Right? So I want you to do that. Just turn that like that. Doesn't matter if it sticks out. Try that one. And the closer you go that way, the higher it'll get. See what I mean? Look. See? So, if you turn that stone that way, to fit in the way it looks logical to fit it in, mm -hmm. that's not what, what we're trying to achieve here. Okay. All we're trying to achieve is to hold it up at the moment. Okay. But what you did there was perfect for when we go to put the stone in. You with me? Yeah. All right, just give me two seconds to get the bead. Now, play nice. She's high at the front. Good. Good. making different mixes because I wanted different consistencies for the bits I'm doing, yeah? You wouldn't normally do that. A lot of people have been asking who was the man in the background. That's our resident ghost. Uh, that is uh, Jim, our stonemason friend, who we mentioned in a couple of videos. Um, he has been here, as you've seen, showing us to, how to get the wall exactly how we want it and fitting this beautiful slate windowsill. Smashed out all the old concrete. Fantastic. Um, this, uh, he wants us to finish this by uh, rounding off these edges and uh, sanding them back. And he says, uh, once it's, we have to wipe it several times to get it properly clean, which we've been doing. But to finish it with a coat of WD-40 will really bring it up nicely. He's, he's done the cheeks of the window himself. All this lime mortar. And this will all be painted with breathable paint and give us exactly the right finish that we want, that the house would have had originally before it was built up with layer and layer and layer and layer of plaster, lime plaster. So, I mean, it's just going to look absolutely perfect. When I said to him, when he saw the video of me saying what I wanted it like, and he knew exactly, exactly what it was meaning. Um, and I'm glad he had... Uh, he had said to us that he, he, he saw that we weren't happy with this and he said, I can show you how to do it properly. So now it, it's actually quite a fast process. So... Well, if we just look at that, that's what we did or we didn't know what we were doing. 
and then here if we can yeah it's picking it up fine so this is what you and Jim well Jim showed you how to do this and then did you do the majority of this he put most of the the render on um I did it down in the corner here um, and he showed me how to, to smooth it all off with the sponge, which I will show you guys um, in another video. First things first, I'm going to chip all this off, or we're going to chip all this off, plug all this out. Um, and then I'm going to come along here and down, and this wall will be finished pretty quickly. Uh, this is the thing, it's like, it seems to have taken forever to get to this point, but now we're at it, things are really speeding up. Yeah, it feels like it's flying now. But yeah, what a, what a gorgeous gift this is. You can't really see that in this. I'll have to take some of the shots of this in a different like setting, light setting, because you can't really see it. The, the sun's just bouncing off the slate. But um, is there anything you want to say about this then, this process? It really makes you, because we laid these stones, right, and now we've made this part of the fabric of the building, it, it makes you feel like part of part of the legacy of it, you know, it's we're part of the fabric of the house now where we weren't yeah. before we were just inhabitants but now we, we've 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 restored it and we've we're we're building it we're rebuilding it i love this old house it's going to look so good this we need to get a sparky here if anybody if anyone knows any local sparkies that want to come over and help us we need to do quite a lot of work with wiring in the house so the electrics here are just a nightmare the, the, my plan for this is to just move it back into the corner and then hide it down the corner there, the socket. Same on the other side. Uh, but yeah, we could use some, some help from a sparky because a lot of the sockets don't work and things like that. Look how nice that looks. We had a long conversation with Jim about this and he was, he was horrified about what he saw because he said the people that did this at the uh, turn of the 70s really butchered it, uh, which obviously you can see. His concern is that this is a load-bearing wall and that isn't sitting on enough stone. He says this should be a lot more, a lot wider, basically. And also this part over here... The sandstone. He said that is sandstone yeah. and that is all that's holding that up, um, apart from this wooden batten. So he's going to come back and we're going to take all this wood out, get some aquaprops and re he's going to help us show us how to rebuild this. And he said it can look absolutely amazing. So it'd be nice to get rid of all this. Obviously, this is just a, like a draft excluder for now, but we're going to have a door put in here. And, and the wall's going to be rounded. Just uh, like the window. Just like the window, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah this, is, no, this is horrendous. This is... We did not expect to see this when we pulled off the old I think we were a bit, a bit blasé about it, weren't we? You told me it'll be, it'll be fine, but Jim, uh, I think you were just trying not to shock me. Jim said that this is a really old, it's just from the, when the house settled yeah. into the bedrock. Um, he said that's a, there's nothing to worry about, it's a really old thing, that, that crack there. But we, we've been told by him not to, to do this wall until he comes back and uh, it'll take... A number of days to get this right um, but he's going to come back and, and help us to do that well this this here could be a six-day job didn't he that's what he said yeah it, it's so it's so knackered as such and serious to resolve it and what he also said was what even when they put in the in the um, early 70s when they put that wooden lintel in there it was illegal it should have been a stone lintel yeah he said well, concrete didn't he yeah they were all putting, supposed to be put concrete in, but we know the builders that did this didn't want to be here. No. The uh, the owner of the island at that point was Olive, who we've talked about before, and when they arrived on the island over at the crossing point at the top of the island, and they figured out that they had to walk all of the equipment and uh, materials down to the cottage over the track, they threw their hands up and said they didn't want the job. And Olive, even though she was an elderly lady at the point, picked up a lot of the equipment and materials herself and and marched it down to the cottage and well, she, said... She embarrassed them, didn't she, into the job? Yeah, and said, if, if an old lady can do it, surely you young whippersnappers can do it. So 
But unfortunately, that's the result of well, builders she, not wanting to be yeah, here. And she would never have seen all this because no, they, would, they would have done this and then they would have immediately put the plasterboard up and yep. then that would have been it. Nobody she wouldn't would have, have known. known. No. We were the first people to see this. And now the world sees it. <laughs> <laughs> that's concrete, isn't it? I can't see from here. It is. There's not that much weight above there. There is part of a chimney still up there. So there is, there is some weight up there, but... I mean, it's held out for this long, but if if we want to make this a home, which we of course we do, then it needs to be done right. And just finally, the ceiling. Looks like it's got a case of the measles at the minute. It's completely finished. All of the caulking and ceiling is done, but that's just going to be yeah. it's going to be a, a job for Scott upside down sanding for a day. And we've got a problem with the Festool sander, haven't we? Oh yeah, we need to send it away. The power cable. Yeah, okay. Jobs are good in. Well, maybe in about two, three months' time. Every house is built by someone. Stone by stone is a refuge and a resting place established. The walls of this old croft have seen wartime and peace, days of uprising and rebellion, marriages, babies born, and life passing through it and away from it, days of joy and those of trial, times of famine and plenty. Just as these stones were picked and placed, so we too establish our lives and build our characters up through experience. Each day, each event, each encounter with a neighbour, another stone is settled and becomes a part of our lifelong spiritual house. We should be to one another living stones, founding our relationships, friendships and communities, enduring our trials together, bearing up against what is thrown at us and offering one another strength and refuge. When we care for one another as we should, with the old-fashioned Christian principles and understanding on which this croft and our nations were established, we build our house on bedrock. The rains fall and the floods come, and the winds blow and fall against us, but we stand. If together we face the trials which the builder of all things sends to weather us, to refine us, we won't fail. From our foundation of bedrock to the chief corner stone, our houses will stand the test of time from beginning to end, if only we build together. I'm going to put a tap in this hole here. We're not going to set it up today because the weather is too fine. It's because that involves draining the second tank that we installed shoving it over and then putting this up next to it so we're going to have have to have some days of rain before we do that uh we've been waiting forever for the tap to arrive this should have been done a week, over a week ago and now we've got the hottest weather haven't we so far this year been nice it's uh it's quite lovely oh have you noticed something look at my head you know hat on yeah that's how warm it is this hole that was already been put up at some previous date uh, is not big enough for the tap that we've got. So, <laughs> wrong tool for the job. <laughs> this is not going to work. You have to use a file. There's absolutely no way that this is going to work. <laughs> Is that it? This has, has to be posted through from the inside and we have to be able to grab it and pull it. So it's going to be tight. Maybe it needs a wee bit more. You're going to have to catch this at the top.
can't see a thing. Hello! It might just be going in a big circle. It is. Uh, I have to straighten it out somehow. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop, that's it. There they go, it. No! Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. We may have to make the hole bigger. We uh, we need time for the silicon to go off anyway, so we, we couldn't fill the tank today if we wanted to. Um, yeah, the tank might have to go up to have it slide down. As, as in up on, on its bottom? Yeah. Right, that first. Tank up. Okay, it's there. All right, you know what? This is so simple, but I am well, so impressed at how easy this is. You say that? Well, I haven't got it through yet. Oh, it's here. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Almost. Come on. Yes. 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 Okay, now you can take the wire out. Now what we have to do with this is, this is obviously the connection point. The silicon on the inside of that, pulling it up to here. The silicon is just, you know, we don't really need that, but why not? But if you go, come up here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see in here, so I'm going to have to try and change the light levels. Uh, one second. Right, if you can see right up there in the centre of the screen, that's the other end of that plug. And we fed it down this wire, which was poking out of the hole that had been made. And then you had to pull it through the other side. Probably not explaining this very well, but it was, it, it was impossible for us to show you because this is a two-person job. So now... That tap can be fixed to that, and nobody had to climb in the tank, which would have been your job. <laughs> right, I'm going to pull this wire out now. Actually, can you do it? Because I'm trying to get my hands full. Now we just screw this on. Silicon it up. Silicon it, okay. Just give a it's tighter bond, won't it? Quite a bit coming through, but yeah. Hang on. I feel like I'm going to fall. I'm not letting go of this. I don't care if I get silicon on my hands. You hold the... Thanks. Okie dokie. Got it. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but... Better safe than sorry. Well, in the end, we did it, but unfortunately we couldn't film it because we're on an incline. We've got no way that we can put the tripod for the camera to balance it, and also we needed, like, two pairs of hands. But for anybody that wants to do this in the future, we'll show you what we did. So once that was threaded through on the wire and we, we, we pulled it through and it was siliconed on the back, that helped give it some adhesive capabilities so it wouldn't fall back through. But then to get the nut, which is here, which is covered in silicon at the minute, to tighten up, we got these, we pushed them in here 
opened it up as far as we possibly could. So there was that pressure there. And then we got the grips. Can you grab the grips? And then we just got the grips and we just tied it up that way. So it, uh, that worked really well. And this is the infamous tap, which we've been waiting forever for. All the shadows make it look very atmospheric. So, once that's done, gone on, then this is our wee tap that you wanted. So now we just need to wait for a, a couple of rainy days. Now, we had planned on doing this anyway, but we were just kind of reluctant to empty the second tank because you know water's a fresh water is a precious commodity here so that tank that you can see directly in front of you is going to be emptied completely or more or less then pushed close to this one to close that gap and then the third tank here will be standing on that plinth and then we won't have to extend the plinth But that's got to wait until it's raining, so we know that we can fill the tanks instantaneously. Both tanks will fill within hours when it's raining. The last thing it's doing now is raining. Moss Mountain, as everybody christened it, did we christen it that, or did the uh, I don't remember saying watching? that, but uh, everyone, everyone, everyone called, it, yeah. called it Moss Mountain, so... I don't um, know if it was us or them, but it's stick, it's sticking. And it's finished? Yes. Uh, a few days ago, I finished this side of it. So I painted it all with, uh, with yoghurt this time. Is any of that working? Because I haven't seen any change on it. I haven't seen any change yet. So this will all be sown with grass seed. Oh, well, the, the moss is, seems seems happy enough. Well, the moss at this time of year tends to go a very like pale green, doesn't it? It looks like it's dying. It's like it's that colour everywhere, but then it comes back again. Nice. Very very old this moss. So gone is the horrible monstrosity that once was. Concrete plinth. Uh, out of necessity, really, but. We could have done like uh, art sculptures on that, you know, like they do in London. The plinths, fourth plinth. Looks all right, don't you think? Well, yeah, I like it. I mean, it's done the job perfectly. Well, actually, that's something that happened, didn't it? When we, um, when you finish off the top, that's when it knocked out. We were worried that building it up had uh, done something to Starlink. Um, but it was just the hot weather, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was when it was recalibrating, wasn't it? But we, uh, it was, it was at the, exactly the same time. We just finished it, and then we got two outages, didn't we, for the first time? Yeah. And we thought that there, were, there may be some way that it was interfering with it, but obviously not. But that is done now, isn't it? That is finished. It is, and uh, the sheep haven't been anywhere near it to investigate no. it. Although the pine martin came and, uh, or one-eyed on yeah. pine ar martin, martin. That's his name. Came and uh, was lolloping about all over it. To the uh, to the disgust of the sheep. What do you think, Jeeves? We're getting more. Can you hear all the voices? Yeah, over there. there are obviously, people on that walk. The people over there on the causeway. It's weird hearing voices again, isn't it? After all that time without them. Something else that's exciting that might excite some of the viewers is uh, Jim gave us a, a ton of his fishing gear that him and his wife don't use anymore. 
So that's going to be coming up as well, filming, actually filming the fishing. Pick some spots. He was showing me how to tell where the fish are and what sort of spots they tend to hang out and the tides, how they act with the tides. So that I'm, I'm excited to be going fishing. Are you going to come with me? I have to practice. It's been about 10 years since I fished, since oh, I lived in Canada. I, I fished once with my grandfather when I was about six. With a stick and a, with a, yeah, with, a bit of string. Yeah, with a stick and a bit of string and we caught an eel. <laughs> That's Yuck. exciting, wasn't Yuck. it? I think it was river fishing as well. It wasn't sea fishing. Well, here you'll get herring and sea trout and mackerel, but obviously mackerel are my favourite. Yeah, I'm really... Like smoking them. Don't. Salmon, uh, haddock, I won't get haddock sole. here. No, I'm just going through the fish I like. All right. Um, mackerel. Uh, kipper. Don't Craster have... kippers over on, they're quite, the smoke kippers on Craster in Northumberland are really nice. But it's all the bones that are in. Smoked fish, can't beat it. That smoked mackerel that we caught, well, that was caught for us here, that was given to us. That was, that's stunning. Well, more to come, I hope. Just got to catch the little blighters. I'm not cooking you any eels. Don't want eels. You, you know what I feel about, even about fishing? Free food from the environment. Yeah, me. I know, but you know, it's like... Get in my belly. When look, you buy it from the shop, it's dead, right? Look, Somebody's listen, killed it. I'm not a vegetarian, yeah, at all. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. And I would never revert back to being one. I like my meat, I like my fish, yeah. But, you know, I do have a problem with, like, people keep saying, why don't you shoot the deer? No, leave the going to swear then leave the deer alone well let them live in their environment and let them peacefully do what they're going to because there's enough people over there that want to shoot them every five minutes as jim said I when know, you get, my point. okay so when it comes to the fishing yeah i know it's only a fish yeah i know it's like ridiculous however there's a part of me that's like oh i can't help that it's just the way i feel about animals and well, fish are an uh, extension of that as jim said See, when you buy your, your bit of fish from Marks and Spencer's and stick it in the oven, yeah. were any fish harmed in the making of this dinner? No. <laughs> What's his point? <laughs> Look, if I don't see it, I don't care. <laughs> what was it Kate Winslet said? And who do you think you are? Um, I want to unsee this. I don't like it. Yes, I don't like this. I want to unsee it. Can you see any U-boats? I think I think there was one actually. Is there? A, what there. is it? Is it it's um, under. You, the renowned the U-boats for coming up and down this channel, looking for like uh, British shipping to pick off. And thank God we've got you here. <laughs>